With the recent news of Amazon's new world being delayed until 2021 and many hungry MMO fans being disappointed by this news, I decided that today I want to talk about the upcoming MMORPG that I personally believe to be the most promising, Ashes of Creation. Before we jump into it though, this video has no sponsor and took me a crazy amount of time to make both with research, fact checking and editing, so if you'd like to support my work for free, this game has an affiliate program that everyone who makes an account has access to. My link to this can be found in the description below, and all signups to Ashes of Creation before September receive a small in-game statue for your house to commemorate our struggles through COVID-19. So for those of you that have never heard of the game before, what is Ashes of Creation? Ashes of Creation is a western-made sand park MMORPG that's focused on a strong mix of both PvP and PvE content. This game was initially kickstarted three years ago, but was already fully funded to completion via private investment from the game's creative director, Stephen Sharif. Unlike many of the Eastern MMOs that have had Western releases over the past few years, Ashes of Creation has consistently said from day one that there will be no pay to win in this game. Due to this, the game will operate with a no box cost subscription fee business model with a cosmetic only cash shop. The thing that makes Ashes of Creation the MMORPG that I'm personally the most excited for is the sheer scope of the project. This game seems to be combining all the best aspects from all the top MMOs over the past 10 years and combining it into one game with all of that being tied together by the game's most unique feature, its node system. Throughout the world in Ashes of Creation, there's points of interest on the map called nodes. These nodes are basically areas that can progress to different stages of civilizational development as players kill monsters, quest, gather, and adventure within that node's area of influence. Starting out day one when the game first launches, the world will be pretty empty. But let's say you and a group of friends all decide to kill mobs and gather in a certain area. Over time, you'll be contributing XP to that area's node, and an expedition will appear with quests. As more players are drawn to the area, it will level up into an encampment with more quests, more NPCs, and more opportunity. After that, the node levels up into a village, town, city, and finally, a giant sprawling metropolis with more opportunity, world events, and quests appearing at each stage of development. Now, that's a very simplified explanation of the Ashes of Creation node system, but on top of that, there's also a lot of variables within this system. System. For example, at launch there will be 103 different possible node locations, and the location of that node dictates the quests and world events triggered upon development. At this point you're probably thinking, well what happens when every node reaches its final stage? Wouldn't that become boring? Well, due to how the system's designed, this isn't possible. In leveling up one node, you lock out the possibility for adjacent nodes to grow to the same size. To change this and de-level a node so that adjacent nodes can progress, players will need to participate in a PvP node siege to destroy a city, for example, so the town node near to it has room to grow and different content can then be unlocked. The way this system is designed intends for long-term player-driven replayability, where each server will have a different history of development and unlocked content. No two servers will be the same, an MMORPG with a true ever-changing world. When it comes to node aesthetics, there will also be a lot of diversity here too, as the node will take on the architectural appearance of the race that contributed the most XP to its development. So let's say a guild of orcs went to an area and contributed the most XP to a node, building it up to a town. You've then got a town with an orcish aesthetic. Maybe a guild of dwarves wanted to explore a node in the mountains. They could eventually have their own dwarven city in the mountains. The aesthetic of the node changes at every level of development based on the race that contributes the most XP to the node. On top of all this, each node in the world will be assigned one of four possible node types, with each having unique benefits. You've got divine, economic, militaristic, and scientific node types. Advancing a scientific node over an economic node, for example, will give different building options for players to manage in the node, such as libraries, colleges, and artisan buildings, whereas if they leveled up an economic node, they could build markets, stock exchanges, and trade-focused buildings. Each node upon 
hitting the village stage of development will have a one week cooldown before node elections begin. In this, players can try to become the mayor of the node. As a mayor, you get to allocate resources, set the tax rate and initiate quests to advance the node, as well as choose building projects contained within that node. The way the mayoral election system is designed is different for each node type. For scientific nodes, it's a popularity contest where you vote another player in. For economic nodes, it goes to the highest bidder. For divine nodes, the player with the most node-related service quests completed will become the mayor, and militaristic node mayors will be decided via a last man standing battle royale type minigame where players interface through a champion rather than their own character. Obviously, bad mayors will be a thing that exists in this game, so every month the election process will happen again so that other players have the chance to challenge for mayor. Other than its node system, Ashes of Creation is also aiming to have a diverse range of content to appeal to pretty much every type of MMORPG player. Let's start with some of the PvP content that will be present in this game. PvP content in Ashes consists of open world flagging, caravan PvP, duels, battlegrounds, castle sieges, node sieges, arenas, and guild wars. But before all of you PvE players get scared off at the thought of open world PvP, you'll be happy to know that this game has anti-grief mechanics in the form of its corruption system. When it comes to corruption, players have three states. Green, non-combatant. Purple, combatant red, corrupted. I've displayed an image on screen that shows how this system works, but from the point of view of a non-combatant PvE player minding their own business, if another player comes up to you and kills you, they will become corrupted and receive ever-growing penalties the more innocent players they decide to kill. Eventually, corrupted players can drop their items which can be looted by other players, they'll also lose more experience upon death, and also feel dampening in PvP so they become weaker. Corruption gained is also greater based on the level disparity, so a high level randomly killing a new low level player really isn't worth it. Additionally, the game will have a bounty system where players with high corruption score will appear on the map for bounty hunters to track down and kill for rewards, and NPC guards will also attack corrupted players on site, limiting their access to services within nodes. The Caravan PvP system in Ashes is designed to bring risk vs reward gameplay. Due to storage being localised to each node and different areas of the map having easier or harder access to certain resources, players will need to transport goods between nodes via caravans. When a caravan is spawned, it will create a moving, open world PvP zone. When players approach the caravan, they will be given three options, attack, defend or ignore. Caravans can transport goods from more than one player at a time, and I can imagine Imagine this system alone will bring about the existence of mercenary guilds who attack caravans or defend them when paid by other players. Castle Sieges will be a monthly event in which guilds can fight in a 250 vs 250 battle to take control of one of the five castles in the world. Node Sieges are different to Castle Sieges and are the catalyst for change in the world. Node Sieges can last up to two hours. If a node is successfully defended, it can't be attacked for a certain period of time in relation to the level of that node. A village, for example, can't be attacked for another 20 days, whilst a metropolis cannot be attacked for 50 days if successfully defended. Ended. Additionally, once a node siege is declared, there's a period of time where many services in the node are shut down in preparation for war. For a village siege, there's two days notice, and for metropolis, there's five days notice. These node sieges can only be declared within a certain period of the server's prime time to give everyone a chance to attend. If a node siege is successful, the node is reset to zero, and players with resources stored in that node will lose some of those resources, and real space player have housing will also be destroyed. Guild Wars are another separate PvP system in Ashes of Creation which basically allows guilds to declare war on each other and receive certain objectives to meet a victory condition. This system isn't fully fleshed out as of making this video, but it seems like a more in-depth version of what Black Desert Online currently has, with objective-based components mixed into it too. Guilds can be at war against multiple other guilds at the same time, and Guild Wars operate outside of the game's corruption PvP flagging system. I think duels 
walls, battlegrounds and arenas are fairly self-explanatory features that Ashes of Creation will have that we all like to see in MMOs, but overall when it comes to the PvP content this game will have, it sounds like everything I've ever wanted in an MMO, from the risk versus reward of the caravan system, to node sieges being the catalyst for change in the world, to the prestige of your guild owning one of the five castles on the server. It seems like this game has PvP content for everyone from casual to hardcore and everything in between. PvE content will play a massive role in Ashes of Creation and features content in the form of quests, open world dungeons, instanced dungeons, open world raids, instanced raids, world bosses and monster coin events, as well as all the activities related to the growth of nodes. PvE dungeon and raid content in Ashes will be designed for group sizes of 8, 16 and 40 players. This game will feature a mix of both open world dungeons and raids, as well as instanced dungeons and raids with 80% of them being open world and 20% of them being instanced. There will be no group finder in this game, so you'll need to join guilds and find party members via social interaction if you want to partake in a lot of PvE content. The way open world dungeons and raids will work is that they increase in difficulty the deeper you venture inside. At the entrance you might be fighting weaker, lower level mobs with fewer mechanics, but as you get deeper into the dungeon you'll fight tougher enemies with more mechanics and better loot. Additionally, something you need to bear in mind is that all of the PvE content that's available in Ashes depends on the location of the nodes that the community decides to develop. One server may have access to completely different raids and dungeons to another server, purely because their nodes develop differently in different locations. So unlike other MMORPGs, the endgame PvE content really isn't a linear progression. It can't be a linear progression because different raids and dungeons will be locked or unlocked depending on where nodes are developed and what stage they're at. So in a way, it could also be in a PvE player's best interest to participate in a PvP node siege to reset the node that unlocks a certain raid so that another node can then be developed which unlocks a different raid. A fun unique piece of PvE content that I think a lot of people will enjoy in Ashes is its monster coin system. This is an event that either spawns randomly or following the advancement of a node in which a horde of NPC monsters will spawn and attack the node. During this time players can use an item called a monster coin, which they can receive as a rare drop in game, to turn into a monster and assist the NPCs in attacking the node against other players. During a monster coin event the node can't be destroyed but buildings, services and NPCs can be disabled for a period of time. Quests in Ashes of Creation are divided up into three categories, events, tasks and narrative quests. Events are things that happen in Ashes as a result of the development of the world. Successfully completing an event will have positive consequences such as buffs and failing events will have negative consequences such as natural disasters or node services being unavailable for a period of time. Tasks are quests without excessive amounts of text and story around them, such as collect X resources to help build a blacksmith for the node. And narrative quests are more traditional story quests that can be personal to your class, race or the region of the world you're in, with some of these story arcs being locked behind further development of the nodes. If I was a role player, Ashes of Creation is without a doubt the MMORPG I'd be looking forward to the most. This game's being designed with so many great RP features to really add that extra level of immersion. First, let's talk about the extensive player housing system. This game will have three types of player housing, instance departments, real space open world freeholds, and static housing within nodes. Each of these three types of player housing become available once a node reaches village stage or higher. Instance departments will become available in a node if a mayor decides to construct apartment buildings within an empty plot. These will work similar to the housing system in BDO, where you approach an apartment door and you've got a list of options for whose apartment you want to visit. Static housing within nodes are real space player housing that players can buy that will be visible to everyone. You'll be able to decorate the front of your house with yard ornaments, seem seamlessly enter and exit, and see your house grow from a small cottage to a mansion as the node levels up. 
Freeholds are large real space player housing plots that can be situated within the zone of influence of a node, but not actually inside the node. Think of static housing as buying a townhouse that grows in size over time with the node, but freeholds as owning a set size plot of land in the countryside. Freeholds are roughly half an acre in size and due to limited space in the world, players can only own one of these per account, whereas apartments and in node housing are limited to one per server. There's many buildings you'll be able to place on your freehold, such as a blacksmith, stables and other stuff related to crafting, role playing and other life skill related content players might want to partake in. Each of these three forms of player housing will allow players to decorate them with furniture, some of which is functional, others just cosmetic and when a node's destroyed, players will lose their housing. However, a template will be mailed to them so they can quickly load the layout of their housing hassle-free when they eventually find a new home. As with every good roleplay MMO, Ashes of Creation will feature a wide range of races. Currently, the game is planning on nine playable races for launch, each of which have different cultures, which will be reflected in the appearance of nodes that they contribute to the most. You've got two different variations of humans, dwarves, elves, orcs, and a race called the Tolnar, which live underground. Different races will have different racial abilities, and each race will have different base stats. However, there will be no gender lock for any of the races, and every race can play as every class. Other nice RP features the game will have include an extensive emote system with interactable furniture, the ability to lean against scenery, sit on benches and dance with other players. You'll be able to play parlour games with other players inside of taverns, some being dice games, others involving cards. You'll be able to join different types of social organisations in the game such as the Scholars Academy, Thieves Guild or Traders Company. And there will also be a marriage mechanic in the game that may unlock special quests and further functionality with player housing. Overall, from a roleplay perspective, it seems as though there's going to be more than enough choices and customization in Ashes of Creation that each player's journey in this game will be completely unique, and it will also have all the immersive social elements that can help bring people together in an MMO. Professions and life skills in Ashes of Creation are referred to as artisan classes. These are split into three different trees, gathering, processing and crafting. Gathering professions consist of fishing, herbalism, lumberjacking, mining and animal taming. Processing professions basically refine raw material via the use of certain freehold buildings, such as forges to process ore into bars, lumber yards processing logs to planks and so on. Crafting professions consist of alchemy, armor smithing, blacksmithing, carpentry, cooking, jewel crafting, scribing, ship building, siege weapon building, and weapon smithing. In this game, each character will only be able to truly master one profession. You'll be unable to master multiple. You'll still be able to progress with multiple professions, but not to the extent of mastery. This is to create the need for community interaction and create a sense of identity. Crafting in Ashes of Creation is also being designed so that it won't become irrelevant like in other MMOs. Crafted gear will be on par with the highest tier drops from raid bosses, and due to being limited to mastery, of only one artisan class, guilds will have to organise multiple people to meet their crafting and gathering needs to initiate sieges, complete projects, and contribute to the node. Personally, the profession I'm most excited for is animal husbandry, as you'll be able to breed different animals together to create some really weird and wonderful mounts. The class system in Ashes of Creation is quite interesting and leads to a lot of variety. First, you'll start out by picking a primary class archetype between Bard, Cleric, Fighter, Mage, Ranger, Rogue, Summoner and Tank. Eventually, as you progress with your primary class, you'll get to choose a secondary class out of the same 8 options I previously mentioned. So choosing to be a Mage, then Fighter for example would give you the overall class of Battle Mage. With this system, there's a possibility of 64 different class combinations which are displayed on screen now. Ashes of Creation will be designed around the Trinity system of Tank, Healer and DPS. You will not be able to change your class's primary role, however with some effort you will be able to change your secondary role. Weapons and armour will not be class locked, but some classes will obviously be more efficient with certain types of armour and weapons. And when it comes to the game's combat system, it will use a tab target action combat hybrid system. The way this system will work is that each class will have two categories of skills, tab target skills and action combat style skills. 
players can choose to have up to 75% of either tab targeting abilities or 75% action combat abilities, but not 100% either way. Personally, the way I'd imagine this system will play out will be something close to Guild Wars 2 or Arcage. However, the action combat side of this combat system is still in development as of making this video, so it's hard to say how the complete system will actually feel. When starting out in Ashes of Creation, you'll first make your character, choose your primary class, then you'll be given the choice to spawn at one of four divine gateways in the world. Each race does have their own starter zone and starter quests, but they won't be super mandatory to do, more of a recommendation. There's nothing stopping you as an elf spawning in the dwarven starting area to level with your friend. The world size in Ashes is planned to be truly massive, approximately 480 square kilometers in size, including including both water and land content, as well as a diverse range of biomes ranging from deserts, swamps, plains, forests, snowy mountains, tropical islands, and everything in between. This game will be fully open world and also features underground zones known as the Underrealm. Ashes of Creation will feature an in-game viewable world map, however starting out much of it will be covered in a fog of war until areas have been explored and uncovered. Additionally, there will be some zones in the world that will experience all four seasons, which will bring about their own events, buffs, debuffs and farming challenges. Seasons will rotate once each week, with a full four season rotation passing by every four weeks. When it comes to the levelling, the max level will be 50 and it will take roughly 45 days of playing 4-6 to six hours per day for the average player to level from 1-50. to 50. So definitely more on the hardcore side of things in that regard. Unlike a lot of modern MMOs, flying mounts will be extremely rare in Ashes of Creation that's achievable only for guild leaders that own one of the game's five castles, the mayor of Metropolis nodes, and through legendary limited time dragon eggs that players might obtain from a world boss. It's unlikely there will ever be more than 10 players per server with temporary access to flying, and when you consider that each server will have a population of between 8 to 10,000 players, seeing them will be really epic. It's also worth mentioning that fast travel will be extremely limited in this game, as the developers want distance to matter. The only form of fast travel that will be possible is if a scientific node reaches the metropolis stage. At this point players can construct a building that offers fast travel only to nodes within the metropolis's zone of influence. But that's pretty much it for my basic explanation of what Ashes of Creation is without going super in depth on stuff. Next I want to talk about why I believe this is the most exciting upcoming MMORPG, and why this game isn't just a pipe dream, rather something many people including myself will be testing with no NDA before the end of this year. First of all, it goes without saying after everything I've just explained about the game, it will be the most ambitious fantasy MMORPG ever attempted. The game will truly have something for everyone. It's not just a PvP MMO or a PvE MMO, it's a genuine PvX MMO that has pretty much everything. Usually when a new MMORPG is announced and they talk about their plans when it comes to game design, it's always vague. There's a ton of question marks on many core systems and it doesn't it doesn't take long before players can look at the ideas of the developers and straight up say, this is a bad idea, this won't work. New World has been a perfect example of this since the first time I tried the game in 2018 to recently when it announced its delay. When it comes to the game design of Ashes of Creation, it seems to me that almost every aspect of the game has been clearly thought out, and thanks to years of Q&As between the community and developers, we have a clear blueprint for how this game will actually play out, if you care to read it on the Ashes of Creation wiki. When it comes to the core game design systems, there's nothing I'm overly concerned about. Everything seems to make sense and follow a strong design principle of risk versus reward. For me, the only real question mark I have about the game is how fun will the combat be? What does their 75% action tab hybrid combat system actually play like? I think if they can nail that and just follow the blueprint for this game until completion, it will be a guaranteed success. Ashes of Creation is primarily 
a privately funded MMORPG made by an MMO fan frustrated by the direction of the genre, who was extremely successful in business earlier in life. Since I first covered this project in 2017, we've seen the studio he created expand to over 100 developers, attracting people from Blizzard, Sony Online Entertainment, Daybreak Games and more. This year especially, we've seen production for Ashes of Creation ramp up significantly, and in recent live streams we've seen gameplay sessions of many core systems working such as the mayoral system, early hybrid combat, real-time node development, open world dungeons, a 40-man raid, the caravan PvP system, basic professions, and the purchasing of in-node player housing. What's more impressive is the creative director's commitment to transparency, despite the project still likely being a solid two years from completion. Sometime this fall we've been told that people who have access to the game's Alpha 1 test will be able to stream and make content about the game with no NDA, and when you consider that Amazon's New World still has a strict NDA, despite previously being two months out from its supposed release, to me shows a lot of confidence in a product. Now all of that's not to say that Ashes of Creation hasn't had its problems or drama surrounding its development, because it certainly has. Releasing Ashes of Creation Apocalypse, the battle royale testing environment on Steam caused nothing but confusion to the people that were casually following the project, and in the past the community went long periods of time without seeing any tangible gameplay due to an issue where large portions of foundation code had to be rewritten, essentially delaying the game by one year. But in 2020 we've really started to see Ashes of Creation come together. Almost every monthly livestream we've been shown new gameplay, we've already had players get into the early Alpha 1 client and talk about their experiences thanks to no verbal NDA, and community perception of the project as a whole has shifted from extremely sceptical to cautiously optimistic. Whilst there's still a long road ahead for Ashes of Creation, I have to say that in the 5 plus years I've been a full time MMORPG YouTuber, this is the only upcoming MMO that I've been able to look at and say to myself, if this game releases, it has a real chance of being the next truly successful MMORPG. Thanks for watching.